Hey YouTube, it's me, Jen, your pudgy picker, and Kim. So we are here again to do another podcast, Two Sisters, One Booth, and we are on podcast number four. Woohoo! So, yeah, I know. It's crazy. So today's topic, we're going to talk about storage and display ideas for your antique booth. Now, whether you're just starting out, uh, you actually have a booth you're going to move into, or you're just thinking about it, or you've been doing this for years, I'm sure there's going to be some information that you can use. And first, I guess when you first start, you're going to need to think about large storage pieces for your booth before you think about anything else. Yep. Got to have some place to set it. Yeah. So if you are interested in looking back at one of our tour videos of our booth, you can kind of see how we have things set up. But the idea is to have a few larger key piece items that you're going to keep in the booth. And, um, you know, you may not find the perfect setup for quite some time. Just, you know, get some items in there and then keep your eyes open for what you think would work. Yeah, we still tweak now and then. <laughs> yeah, well, we're very... <laughs> we're, 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 we're very tweak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, with our booth, we have one very large, very tall white shelf that is in the very back middle of our booth. And then on either side of that, against the back wall, is pretty much a standard bookcase... I'd say, yep. what, five feet? Yeah. Five feet tall? Um, yep. And then as you come up the sides of the video, uh, sides blah, 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 of the booth, <laughs> we have um, uh, shelves with L brackets on the wall. Permanently adhered to the wall. Yes. Um, so I believe there are three shelves. And how, how high would you say the tallest one is? Four? Up off the Yeah, four, four? feet. Four and a half feet? Oh, you mean length? No, I mean up off the floor. Okay, it's not four feet. I'm five feet. Can't be four feet. Oh, you think it's is it less? <laughs> well, yeah, you're how, talking about the white the, ones yes, on the wall. Yes, with the L no, brackets. No, no, no. Yes, the L brackets. No, they're they're just what we did basically is we know approximately the height of stuff, the biggest things we'd bring in. So we kind of just use that, but I, I wouldn't say that's more than. A foot and a half, not quite two feet up off the floor. I mean, the 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 that's what I mean. The asking. top one. Oh, oh the high. I'm gonna pause it and <laughs> slap her. No, we have three shelves. Yes, three shelves. The, the bottom shelf is about a foot yes. and a half, like eighteen inches off the floor there for taller go. items. Okay. The next one is a foot. The next one is a foot. So yeah. we're talking one, two, three and a half feet. Okay. Now I got you. That's why I kept <sighs> looking at you like. And the main me. reason we didn't go higher on that is because we have a lot of pieces that hang on the wall. Yes. So we needed the wall space. And then we have our shutters. If you watch our video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Our shutters attach to the wall and come out to the edge of the aisle. And that's also for hanging up items. Then in the middle, we have a 25-inch by 25-inch metal and glass display that's right up against the line of the aisle. I always love how you know the exact measurement of that You know piece. why? <laughs> you know why? There's a reason why. And I will give Please you the reason why. Tell me why because I'm dying to know. Because when we left our old space and we were coming to our new space, we knew essentially the spaces were 10 by 10. So we, I measured all of our fixtures because we had a double space in our old mall. Yep. So we knew not everything's going to fit. So what I did is I measured everything out, and then I sat down with a piece of paper and was jotting out all the ideas of how <laughs> things could go. Now, of course, things never translate from a piece of paper to actual That's very life. Yep. But I remember that because then the piece behind it is also 25 inches by 25 inches where we hang our purse and we have our fabric. And then behind that is a jewelry spinner. Whoo! That was like, a lot. Isn't that awesome? Wow, I'm See? so proud of you. I know. <laughs> now ask me what I had for dinner yesterday. <laughs> what did you have for dinner I have tonight? no idea. <laughs> what was dinner tonight? Oh, yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, might so, be. yeah, so the point is, it may take a while for you to get 
fixtures. You kind of want to have a few key pieces and then be able to change up as time goes on. So those are our key pieces. We had, like I said, a double space. We had literally 200 square feet that we came from and we had a lot of fixtures. So when we moved to the smaller space, of course, we couldn't use them all. So we kind of tried to maximize our space. We started out Ugh. with, I mean, it was a just, table. Yeah, we had a table. And In plastic fact, storage shelves. The and... antique, it was an antique table that I literally saw guys carrying it to the curb and said, hey, I think I want that. And they're like, we'll load it up for you. So that's what it was. Yep. So we'll talk about yeah. the advantages or disadvantages of that in a few minutes. But the point is, just because you don't have all those key pieces or your booth doesn't look exactly how you want it to from day one, don't fret because you're going to come across some awesome pieces. Yep. And vendors who are rearranging their spaces uh, are often selling their storage or their display pieces. So it may be a little high or maybe a little more than you want to pay, but that's where a lot of people, mm -hmm. vendors get items is from other vendors. Yeah, I'm thinking other than our tables or our, our shelves on the wall and the main piece in the back, I think all of our other stuff has been bought from other vendors that we're mm -hmm. selling over time, one piece at a time. Yeah, that's what you have to do. You kind of want to set it up and, and you know, you want to kind of, it's hard because you want to hit the ground running. You want, as soon as you start, you know you're paying rent and you want to, you know, get some things going and you want to make some money. Um, in our mall, uh, the owners are very good about if you start to move into a space, they'll give you a week or two to paint, to set up and say, okay, I'm officially selling now. And I know a lot of places wouldn't do that. Um, yeah. it's kind of like an apartment where you get the apartment and you start moving your stuff in, but you don't pay rent yet. It's like yeah. that, that doesn't usually work. So we're very fortunate in that, that our owners are very, uh, understanding and lenient people. Yep. So, you know, you want to make a good start, but just don't think if don't I don't drag have, it out too long. Yeah. <laughs> don't overstay your yeah. unwelcome. <laughs> yeah. So you, you know, you want to have a couple large key pieces and look around your house. You don't have to say, oh my gosh, i got to go out and spend hundreds of dollars. I mean, look around your house. The largest item <laughs> piece we have yep. was a shelf that my dad made for my mom for her dolls and all her little collectible things. This shelf is enormous. Huge. And it was blue. Yeah. Yes. Ba light baby blue. Yes, baby blue. So we painted it white. Yep. And it had some finials on top, but that made it a little bit difficult to, I think the reason we took them off, <laughs> I'm just remembering say, now, why yeah. did we take the finials off the top? Because my, the uh, gate on my van wouldn't close with them <laughs> on. So we took them off and then we decided we liked them off because then if you put something on top, you didn't have to put it behind yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. So, Even yeah. Even though some people didn't think I'd be able to fit that big thing in my van. I did. I know. I have a smaller car, but I tell you, I could pack a lot of crap in that. And I always laugh when people go, oh, that's not going to fit. I'm like, just, just try it. It's like a clown car. Open the back, see what I can pull out. <laughs> that's about it. So you want to, you know, start finding those key pieces. If you're just starting out, you know, and you know that's what you're going to do. You basically know what size space you're going to have. You know, look around your house. Um, you know, look garage, at garage attic. sales. Yeah. Anywhere you got, because yeah. you may have items that would work for that. And even if you only use them temporarily, it's going to serve its purpose until you get some, you know, some more permanent fixtures. Um, so now that we've talked about the larger items, um, let's talk about other things that you can use that would be good for storage um, of smaller items. Well... Uh, again, especially if you're just starting out, you don't have to put a lot of money into things. Look around and see what you have. Uh, baskets, shelves, crates. Um, crates can be painted or unpainted, stacked to create shelves or turned on their side to use for displays. Um, I even had, uh, at one point, we had DVD, like a DVD-sized shelves. 
um, that aren't very deep, but those are great for small items. Mm -hmm. uh, regular sized bookshelves. Um, you can get creative. Um, if you don't have a lot of money to spend, you, I've seen some really cute places that have used uh, cinder blocks, cement blocks, and have painted them very bright colors. Uh, or wrap them in material and then put a nice piece of an old board across them for a shelves or or pots um, planters and they're used as displays but again if you use something like that especially please make sure that you have them secured so that if they get bumped or leaned on they're not gonna fall over yeah you kind of can uh... You don't get repeat customers if you kill them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, kind of get a bad reputation. Yeah, but. or squash their child. Yeah, not yeah. so much. Um, another thing that I've used, and I always talk about this, and anybody who's watched my channel for any amount of time, is colanders. You can pick them up dirt cheap at garage sales, thrift stores. They make a good display for like items. You can, you know, put a couple of handfuls of items. Old drawers. Um... Uh, people I've bought and sold and used uh, drawers out of old sewing machines or out of old desk drawers or some of the smaller drawers that are in like a big roll top desk. Um, any ones that are those different sizes that you can use. Um, baskets. You know, there there's a wide variety of baskets. Pick ones that look nicer. You don't want to get ones that look like you got them from the dollar store or they're for Easter baskets that if you look at them, they're going to crunch and, you know, make a mess. You do want something that looks a little higher end, a little nicer. Uh, and again, thrift stores, garage sales, uh, you can find those. And lined ones are even very nice as well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, too, um, because I make things like the kitchen hand towels, I actually was able to find one of those bar holders that you slide over the cabinet door to put your towels on. And we have one of those that we've hung on one of our shutters that I thus hang my little hand towels that I make on. Um, also trays that are wood trays or the mirrored trays. We vanity sell a lot trays, of those yeah. vanity trays. They look pretty to display items on and you can sell them all at the same time. Now, keep in mind, with talking about selling, you have a, a like a small display or a little shelving thing. If you're looking to sell that shelves, try not to put a lot of things <laughs> on it or very little or delicate things on it. Yeah. Because if someone wants to buy that shelf that you're selling, they're going to take all that stuff and just set it everywhere. Yes. <laughs> because I've seen it as a person who's worked in... Uh, at the mall at certain days. I've had to do that uh, before. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, um, what we do on our permanent shelves is uh, more things that we're going to keep. I, I think a lot of our stuff's adhered to the wall, so we don't really have, but a few things that look like they could be for sale shelf-wise, just put a tag on it that says NFS or not for sale. But if you have a vendor number, Put your vendor number on items because if something gets misplaced, even if it's a display item, everybody will know where it belongs. So just make sure that that's marked because I've been in a situation where we've worked at the mall and people have said, oh, how much is this little shelf? It doesn't have a price. I called. That's not for sale. So I tell them, next time you come in, put a not for sale sticker on it because if some one person is interested in it, there's going to be a lot of people that want it. Very true. So, yeah, so keep that in mind. Um, also, with our booth, it's, like I said, 10 by 10. Uh, we have, and these were actually installed by the previous vendor, uh, essentially 2 by 4s that were painted, and they're strung across and attached to the top of the walls, and there's a lot of cup hooks that were screwed in. So we can hang wind chimes, bird feeders, birdhouses, other items up high or signs so that gives us more areas to display because you're paying that rent and you want to get as much space and use out of that space as absolutely possible so think up <laughs> yeah i mean you you're paying for every inch make sure you use every inch yeah we're kind of like that we like to we like to make sure we're getting our money's worth <laughs> 
bang for the buck. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention, and we've done this for quite some years, between the, mo- the booth we're in now and the mall we used to be in, is if you decide to buy, because they are cheap and they're pretty sturdy, is the common brown, uh, you know, wooden shelves or press board shelves. Uh, sometimes they can be dark and you can, you know, it's harder to see. What we did is we bought uh, two lace panels and hung them in the back of the shelf, took all the shelves out, put this lace panel, tacked it up with thumbtacks in the back, put the shelves back in. That gives you a lighter background. Plus it makes the piece look a little bit nicer and a little bit dressier. And though that display, that works really well. We have that in yeah, our shelves. Especially if you have... It's wood grain, and you put anything on there that's that tone of an item, and it just blends into the shelf, and you don't even see it. So yep, that does gets, make it stand out a little more. Gets washed out. And a lot of people, uh, if you're starting out, that's the cheapest way to go is to buy those. But you want to make them look a little different. Even if you use wallpaper or contact paper, some mm-hmm. of the contact paper now is beautiful to pull the drawer, you know, pull all those shelves out, put something lighter in the back. And, you know, make those items stick out a little bit better. And it makes it look different from everybody else who might have that shelf, too. Yeah, very true. Um, let's see, what else? Could well, we you... have pegboards uh, can be used efficiently, too. Um, if you hang those up, then you can rearrange your hooks and things for that. Uh, shutters, like we mentioned, we have two big shutters that attach to the wall and come out. But also... Smaller shutters. Um, I've seen quite a number of ways of putting them together. Uh, recently, someone at our mall took uh, a shutter that was attached, so it was like partly bent, like it was partly closed. Had two of those, and in between them, then used the like the framing out of a window that makes it look like window panes. Oh yeah. And attached it on each side, so you're attaching these shutters to these window frames, and they have jewelry and scarves and things hung from there. So, I mean, uh, shutters, There, there's a multitude of ways that you can use shutters in a booth. I've even seen, like, the shutters, like, the width of what you'd have on the front of your house next to the window, the taller ones, and people have, like, knocked out a few slats and put, like, a board. A board across. You just yeah. have to, again, be careful that you're not, you know, putting that up and then you're, you know, you have, like, 100 pounds of geodes or something on it. It's just, <laughs> you have to be... Or books or something that's going to be extremely heavy. Just keep in mind, you know, that that you want to make sure that the item is safe for you and definitely for the customers. Oh, yeah. Um, Another thing I always think of is always be on the lookout for useful fixtures uh, in your mall. We have a large uh, space in the back for, it's a common area for uh, furniture. So uh, we're always, even though we kind of are pretty much happy with how we have things set up in our booth, we're, we always have our eyes open for, for something different. So we always take a buzz back there and take a look and see what we can see. And if it's something we could use or we think it might work better in our space, then we're, we always have that open mind. We're always thinking about what would work better, what could fit more, what would look nicer. So that's something. Always be on the lookout. Other vendors are probably going to be one of your best options for finding other fixtures where they have switched out. Um, And if you see something you like, grab it up quick. (laughs) Because I know, yes, yes, I'm speaking Mm. from experience. We were, uh, I had mentioned something to Kim and I said, did you see that? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, I wonder how tall that is or how that would fit if we got it for this particular space. So I had already looked at it, so I came back, and we talked for a minute. I got my measuring tape, went back, and another vendor was back there hanging a sold sign on it. She bought it for her booth. So keep in mind, uh, your other vendors, they're also looking for awesome pieces to go in and something that they can use. So if you're going to see something, be quick. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, Um, well, talking to... uh, Not only just the larger things and that, too, though I was thinking uh, there's so many things you can use to display things on those bigger things. Um, Those glass compote things where they put the layered salads or whatever, those are great for smaller items or... 
Oh, um, you mean the one that our grandma used to do banana pudding in? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that's what they were called. But. Yeah, compote. They're like, on, a lot of them are on like a stand, a candle stand style thing. But yeah, any of those or uh, the, um, I, I have, ugh, brain fart, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Try this again. Um, so yeah, that, the glass dishes, um, veggie, the veggie baskets, like you hang in your kitchen that are three tier. You can hang those someplace and put mm -hmm. smaller items in it. Um, wire mesh in frames is another good way of showing displays or putting little paper clips on them to hang up memorabilia or postcards that you might be selling. Um, jewelry displays. Yeah, you can buy them or make them to display your jewelry. I mean, go on to Pinterest or YouTube and look up. Everything is easy from, uh, not toilet paper rolls, but like paper towel rolls. They show you how to make those, cover them in fabric, and use those to display. So you don't have to always put out a lot of money on something that's something that you have the same items in your house to put together on. Yeah, that's true because I think the expense is something that might chase a lot of people off. And they're like, oh, I got, I got to buy all these display things, and then I got to buy all this and buy all that. And, you know, don't don't get overwhelmed in the beginning. If this is something you really want to do, um, you know, take like I said, do basic fixtures, things you have around the house. You know, go on Pinterest, find a few ways to make a few things. I mean, with, with all the craft-type things and contact paper, there's a million ways you can make things look, you know, presentable in your booth and make it look appealing. Um, the other, uh, one, there's one other booth that has, I think it's almost like a baker's rack and it's turned in such a way where they have like a, a string that kind of loops, it goes down a little bit and then it ties on the other side and they have clothespins and they have hankies like folded over this and pinned yes. on and it's so cute yeah they're folded in almost like a diamond shaped pattern so it looks cute hanging there yeah along with you can just pick off the individual ones that you want it's yeah nice. so stuff like that i mean we don't sell hankies or anything that small but you know when we're walking or that's why it's so important whenever you're at your booth look around walk around look and see what other people are selling what they're selling it for how they have items displayed um, I mean, that's, that's where you're going to get your ideas from is, you know, ways to set up your booth or to kind of tweak how you have things set up. So always keep an eye on what's going on in the rest of the, the mall because that's going to help you be a better seller um, in your space. Oh, definitely. I get a lot of ideas. Sometimes you'll look at something and you know that you wouldn't have that product or be able to display things that way, but it triggers something else in your head. You know, I got this at home that looks sort of like that, and I could do it for this reason. So it, it's really, it really does keep you on your toes, keep you thinking about how to display when you're looking at, and how not to display when you're looking at other people's food. Yeah, yeah. So before we go on to the nose, no. I should say, um, I was thinking there was one other thing I wanted to bring up. Well, I know I had vases and doilies to uh, use. Yeah. Spice racks like that little Nick bric-a-brac. Um, Jenny has a small, like, it looks like a picture frame, but it's got little shelves in it, probably two inches deep, you think? Yeah, two, two and a half inches. And that's been hanging on the wall. It, it holds all of those little tiny, minute things. It keeps it at eye level so they don't get lost yep. on the shelves. So those are always a great thing if you have small items. Oh, we're talking about foam heads. Yeah. <laughs> If you do hats or um, baseball caps or if you knit or crochet hats or scarves. Or sell vintage hats. Yeah, exactly. Um, those are real cheap at a lot of the craft uh, stores and such. Sell the styrofoam heads unless you're fortunate enough to find the nicer ones at a garage sale or something, the well, wire ones. Plus, and... you can do a lot of things with those foam heads. You can do, even if you get like just old sheet music or something, you could even... You know, take the Mod Podge and cover it. I mean, you don't have to just buy the ugly foam in. I mean, you could yes. paint it. You could all kinds of things. One thing you should absolutely not do. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. I was going to Tell say. them what they should absolutely oh, not do. Don't paint, paint faces on it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> there have been several we've seen They're over the years. Scary. They are nightmare <laughs> inducing. I mean, you see it and it's 
It, it makes you flinch. It's just, it's scary. It is not an attractive <laughs> eye. It is not bringing good recognition on your product. Especially when it's at eye level and you're not expecting to see it. You go around the corner and go, ah! So, yeah, don't, don't paint a face on it. Unless you're super artistic, artistic. or something. Yeah. But otherwise, please don't. Or I'm sure you could even go again on Pinterest and find a way to, you know, bend wire hangers and, you know, make something that's, you know, attractive or whatever and spray paint it. You know, again, having a good imagination makes a lot of these things easier. There are some people, like we've had people come in our booth and they'll look at how we have displayed other vendors and go, oh, wow, you know, because not everybody has a good imagination on how to arrange things. You can pick out things and find a good price, you know, sell really desirable items, but if you don't know how to display them. Oh, that's a killer. Oh, it is. That is a big killer for sales. Okay, we've talked about the good. Now let's talk about the bad. <laughs> Are we going to do ugly too? Let's do the ug. Well, we already talked about the mannequin yeah, head, so we don't want to talk about that. So what should you not be using in your booth for display? Well, I know that I can't stand to go in and find things laying on a pile on the floor um, or in things that are dirty, uh, dirty containers, dirty boxes. Um, I don't care how many pairs of Nike shoes you've bought. I don't want your cardboard Nike box in there yeah. on a shelf filled with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, cardboard boxes in general are not a good idea because when I see cardboard boxes I think garage sale yes and we are not striving for a garage sale look that is absolutely what we do not no, want not garage sale not flea market oh. you want to have a higher end looking booth so we were literally in our old mall maybe a month or so ago and walked through and there was literally cardboard boxes with baby clothes sizes written with magic marker on the boxes. And the flaps. I mean, flaps on, still the on them and yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if you're going to get a cardboard box and you're going to cover it in contact paper and it's going to be cute and you're going to have a whole bunch so it kind of matches, that's a different story. When you have a cardboard box that it looks like somebody just shipped yeah. something. You pull it out of your attic, open it up, and there you go. Yeah, there it's open it up, dump your stuff in, you're ready yeah. to go. That is that is no. not the look that you want. Um, uh, there are a lot of really cute plastic bins. Now, if you're in one of the nicer, you know, some Dollar Trees are quite nice, and they have a wide variety of a lot of the really pretty baskets that have like lace design and a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes. Those, if you have several or you arrange them in a nice way, that's reasonable. But there are some really cheap, sad looking mm -hmm. <laughs> plastic bins out there. So those you want to avoid. Well, you know, for instance, in our booth, we have... Um a couple of the smaller, they're not very tall, maybe a couple of inches tall, and they're plastic uh, that you would use like in your drawers to keep your junk drawer together or whatever. Yeah. But the reason we use those is you need something to keep something from falling off the shelf or being slid too far back or whatever, but that don't come up too high so you can see the product. Um, such as like the water bottle covers that I make or the tissue covers. They're small items that you need to have kind of stand up and visible. So something like that, they're uniform, they're the same color, they blend in with the shelves, they sit nicely together. So, you know, something like that's a dollar store item, but it, you can get away with it because it doesn't look cheap sitting on the shelf. Yeah, and I know, um, like our, we have our big white shelf in the back and then our white shelf, oh, we have white shelves, laminated shelves on the side. So why, and we, our walls are like a taupe, real pretty taupe color. So we kind of accessorize with white. So if we do get a basket or something, um, you know, like a plastic basket, you know, if it's white, it, it tends to look more uniform. Um, no laundry baskets. <laughs> We're talking about plastic containers, but we have seen a few laundry baskets in our day. Yeah. No. No, don't no. do that. Don't do that. I'm and not shopping your basement. <laughs> I don't want laundry baskets. 
I mean, when you when people look in your booth, you don't want them to think about a garage sale because they're going to think garage sale prices. And you're trying to go for more of a, this is not a word, but I'm going to use it anyway, a <laughs> boutique-y, you know, boutique kind of chic little side place, you know, not a chain store. That's That's what you're going for. You don't want people to walk in. And if you have your stuff in a cardboard box, then don't expect to get much money for the items. And if more than one vendor does that in a mall, you may turn a customer off and they may just say, you know what, this is just junk. So you're not only going to hurt your sales, but people may just not want to come to the mall at all for that reason. It really is. It's a psychological thing with people. And it can, it can cover a multitude of areas. Um, for instance, if you're, say you go to a thrift store, Goodwill, Salvation Army, whatever thrift store, and you go in there and you find a brand new item still in the package, still got the price tag from the original store, and it's even, you know, say it's a $50 item and you see it's only $30, a lot of times you're still stink thinking it's in a thrift store. Why would I pay $30 for it? Well, it's still $20 off of going in the store and buying it brand new, but... You're in a thrift store, you have a thrift store mentality. Now, if I went into that store and I saw it on their clearance rack for that price, I'd be jumping up and down for joy going, Mm -hmm. Woo-hoo, look at the deal I got. Yeah, you know, that's true. So when very true. When you when you set up something visually to 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 give an idea of a higher price, people are more willing not to think twice about that price you have on it. But if you set up and look like a garage sale or um or a flea market, they're automatically going to have that mentality that they want that flea market price, and they're not going to pay, even if it's an awesome, good price in your booth. That's definitely that's definitely something to consider. Also, um, I know this is a little off topic, but it, it does make sense that if your items are clean and fresh, when you go into a thrift store, it has a smell to it. So, and and a smell can be a very powerful. Yep. thing on your mind so that's another thing that uh a lot of people that come into our uh antique boo or antique mall are like it's it doesn't smell stale it doesn't smell old it doesn't smell used or moldy and even though we're selling older items it doesn't give that off so if it smells like a thrift store and it looks like a thrift store then people are going to expect a thrift store yep so, you know, that's that's mainly what we're getting at is to make sure. And even if you have uh, baskets or colanders or old drawers, you have these cute things that we said are good, yeah. clean them up. Because if something's dirty, that's going to turn people off. And if you have something dirty and you're putting stuff in it to display, it's going to be dirty too. I, I think a lot of this, though... It just takes a minute of common sense and think about it. Okay, now we're talking about laundry baskets in general. No. But let's say you're allowed to or have like smaller baby items or vintage toys or, um, you know, small balls or, you know, those kind of things. If you had like five of those smaller laundry baskets all in the same, you know, they're new, they're fresh, they're not dirty, broken, and they're all the same, and you have them sitting maybe at a little bit of a pitch, you know, and lined up like that with those items in it, that would be cute. That would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. But I guess what we're talking about is that, you know, I'm just going to grab this and take it. Oh, I'm just going to leave it sit here. Yeah, that's like loading up crap, just walking in and sitting on the floor in your booth. That's, you know, like you said, you know, things are common sense, but not everyone has common sense. No. You know, I think of those chip baskets. I mean, they sell these display units two regular stores and they are hundreds of dollars and basically all they are is a post on legs and hooks that are holding these chip wood baskets or baskets you'd see like at a farmer's market yeah. little round baskets and yep. if you just took one of those and it's dirty from being in the garage or something and you set it in your booth it's going to look like crap <laughs> but if yeah. you have them and displayed the right way then they're okay you just have to think about what you're doing first and think about too if you have something and it's older and you're using it as a display, if it's not clean, then maybe you should put a piece of fabric in it to line it or something. Because if you're going to, if you're going to have an old, you know, 
an old thing for Coke bottles and you're putting delicate things in there, it's going to be snagging and getting things dirty. And it's just, it's not, I mean, it's, yeah. it's going to ruin your items you're trying to sell. I actually have, and it, it's in a box that needs to be pulled out and put out for sale, but I have a, it's a small wooden box. I can't even say it's really a box. It's not real deep. It was used um, in, a, in a garage or a, a setting where there was tools and oil and such. But when I bought it, I bought it full of bung holes. Now, if you don't I beg hole, your pardon. I know. <laughs> That's why I was sitting here snickering while you were talking because I'm like, I'm going to say wants, bung holes. Nobody wants to hear about your bung hole. <laughs> They're like a cork <laughs> that go into um, uh, barrels, um, bung holes. Anyway, so this was a dirty box that was full of old bung holes. Well, of you course... You mean bung hole plugs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting a little two fifty shades uh, yeah, here. Yeah, uh, no. It's not happy. <laughs> but anyway, back to topic here. Yes, dear. Okay, I'm with so, you. So, though, you know, something like that, you're not going to be able to clean it up all the way. I'm not going to be able to get the oil out of it, but I am not going to dump my bung holes out of there and put lace doilies in it. You know? It so, might look better than a bung hole. <laughs> You haven't seen my bungles. Oh. Okay. So anyway, yeah. yeah. So again, common sense. Yeah. Think about it. I mean, if you're going to pick up something and, you know, it's going to be in a box that's old, that's, you know, got splinters. You don't want somebody digging through a box and they get a splinter. I mean, that's, you know, you just want to make sure it, again, things are safe and clean. Uh, it fits what it's for. Yes. And if you, no matter what you have, basket, box, drawer, whatever, make sure that when you are displaying items, you're displaying like items. So if you have a basket and it has, you know, craft type items, or if you have one that has uh, like rubber stamps, or you have one, like I have one that has incense, you want to make each box that you're grouping items in be like or similar items because depending on what someone's interest is, they will stand there and dig through them for an hour if that if it's an interest. I know uh, when we were getting ready to start the podcast, uh, Kim was saying, you know, if I see a little bin with sewing stuff, I'll stand there and look and touch every piece that's in there. So you want to make sure that it's like items so that if someone is interested in those items, that they're they're going to spend the time and they're going to look through it. So... To organize things in such a way where it makes sense. Yeah. Because in our booth, we have an area that we have, uh, you know, jewelry display items. And then we have jewelry. And then we have glass, hand-blown glass items. And then we have a kitchen-y area. And then we have, uh, uh, you know, like nautical. a little area. Yeah, nautical uh, things. We have an area that has books. So animal you, figurines or animal type mm -hmm. items. Together. So you want things to be grouped Frogs. similarly so that when people say, oh, I love animals. Oh, look at all the animals. So it's something that draws them in and they're going to look. Because if you have, oh, this is a cute animal here, you pick it up and walk out and there's 10 animals on the other side of the booth. I mean, it's not going to be able to be perfectly organized so that everything makes sense. But you want it so that it does draw people in. Um, we've talked about this before and Kim and I, <laughs> when I tell you to go and walk around your, mo your, your, uh, antique mall or an in antique mall, look at the booths as you walk by them. Are you looking at that and thinking, Ooh, and you're drawn, you want to walk in there and look around or do you stand there and go, Ugh. Yep. I did that today. Um, you were in, uh, the meeting that you participate in every other week. The ad there, team. The ad team <laughs> meeting, yeah. And I was held as a captive audience today because I rode with her over there. So I had no yep. way to get out of it. No, I hadn't been up in a while um, to walk around. So I did take my time and walk through the booth, booths for about an hour. And I was just telling her, you know, someone had, um, it's a, I don't know if they've just rearranged the booth or if it's a new person or what, but they had bought a, what do you call those display things with, you know, you you put your dishes or display items in it, and it it's it was about three and a half four feet wide, and it was glassed in in the front. It was good five feet or more tall, and it had a solid back to it. And they had it dead center front, right up to the edge of the line of the booth aisle, 
And when you stood there, literally, that's all you could see. And in order to see if there was anything else in the booth, you literally had to step around it to look in the booth. My first thought, because I knew we were going to be discussing these things, you know, tonight, my first thought when I saw it was, oh my gosh, and I started to walk past and I went, no, I'm going to stand here and evaluate this so I can talk about it tonight. <laughs> and that's what it was, is that was a nice piece if it would have been against the back wall or a side wall. Mm -hmm. But if I have to, as a shopper, which I love to shop, I am a good shopper, if I have to stand there and figure out how I'm going to get around something to look behind it and see if it's even worth my walk in the booth, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I've got, there's, what, 112 booths there? Mm -hmm. I mean, that one of 112, I've got other booths I could shop in. I don't have to go in that one, and that's my attitude. Yeah. It's like having a booth, and then you put a brick wall in front. <laughs> exactly. You have a... A two foot section to squeeze through, and if you can't fit, oh well. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know you want to make the shopping uh, you want to make the shopping experience for uh, your customers. You want to make it pleasant. You want to make it enjoyable. You want to invite them. Into yeah, your you don't booth. you don't want them to be trying to squeeze in around a shelf, and then they you know run into something, and then they kick something that's on the floor, and then a shelf falls and clunks something. I mean. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah. you just you want it to be a pleasant experience, and you want people to feel drawn into your booth and into your space, and to look in and go ooh and want to look. And if you are contemplating, or even if you have a space, that you know what booths when you walk around and you see that, you know what it's like. And people, you know, we're talking about using every square inch and making sure you do, but you don't want to have it so <laughs> stuffed. That, you know, that uh, there are some booths I'm afraid to walk in. Yeah, or if you're carrying a purse or yeah. something over, you know, and you have it pushed around a little bit behind you when you're shopping. And you, your purse is knocking things over in there. That's yeah. not good. Yeah, so when I see that, I'm like, you know what? I really rather not shop in there because I'm afraid I'm going to break something. Yeah. So, you know. Or step on something. Yes. There are some, the floor. I think our old mall had a little more of a problem with this, but literally you could only look from the aisle. You, I don't even know how people were even able to step into yeah. the booth. I'm visualizing a yes. couple of them there. That and we... it's like, I mean, there yeah. was one that had a lot of bins, boxes, things, and it literally, if, if you remember the one I'm going to talk about, had a race car bed right in the middle. <laughs> Do you remember that yeah, one? Yeah. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> so even if you saw the Hope Diamond for $10 <laughs> hanging on the back wall, good luck getting to it. Because, you know, that's it's... Yeah. And another thing that, that reminds me of is if you're hanging stuff up like we do, not only to have it displayed safely, but realize that other people or employees or other vendors are going to have to climb up and get this stuff down that's display because the customer is going to go, I want that, and they're going to point yeah. up. So make sure that it's safe for your other vendors to be getting things down from a high display area. Well, and that brings to mind, I know this is going off topic, but price, when you have price tags, hang the price tags so people can either see them the where they're hanging or have an extended uh, piece of string or something hanging down enough because how yeah. many times at working I've had people have to climb up to get something down to look at it to find a price and then the person's oh, like, oh, that. no, I don't want it. <laughs> and then they've got to get up there and balance it back up there and put it back yep. on that high shelf or whatever. If you have the prices visible, then if somebody wants it, it's worth the effort of getting it down for no, you. No, that's, that's in line with what we're talking about because that is a display issue. And if you have a beautiful picture or a sculpture or something hanging on the wall... You don't want a lot of people handling that. And if people are picking it up and taking it off the wall because they can't find the price. It's on the bottom of the item. Yeah, and then they're <laughs> hanging it back up. The chance of them dropping yeah. it or dropping it on something else and yeah. breaking something. Don't, yeah, just make sure that you can see, you know, the price easily. Um, I know uh, one of the uh, vendors in our space, um, his name is Rich. <laughs> Some of the funny stuff he says is I... I hung up a picture in the back area, if you can hang larger items in the furniture area. 
And he says, that price is, when he came back, he looked at it and he goes, that the price is too high. And I'm going, well, I didn't think it was that high. It's similar to that one down there. And that one's asking this amount of money. And he laughed and he goes, no, I, I, can't, I can't see the price. It's way up too high. I'm like, oh, that. So he was pulling my chain. But yeah, it, you know, have it. Where, and it's funny because I've actually hung stuff up. And if it has like a sawtooth hanger on the back, I'll put my string tag and then I'll flip it over the top. And then by the time I rustle the thing, get it up on the wall, and then I step down, I look, and it's facing the picture. I've mm -hmm. literally stood <laughs> on the floor going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it flips the price around, and I'm like, yay! Yeah. Well, so, I know yeah. that there's been, you know, when you're shopping like that, whether it's a regular store or not, too, if I see something but I can't see the price on it, you're standing there going, okay, do I really want to take the time to find someone to get up there to look? Is it what it, you know, more than likely it's probably going to be a price I can't afford anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So do I really want to take, you know, so you possibly lost a sale. Yep. That's so true. if you've got the price there, the person can look at it. And even if it seems a little high, they have time to think, you know, well, maybe I'll go back to that because that wasn't. But I mean, if they, t if they're like me and it's like, no, I just forget it. It's probably too high and walk away. It could have said free with purchase of a dollar candy bar or something and yeah, here you I don't walk know. away without it, you know. And since we have so many different vendors in our area, it's not like a store where you go in and go, well, basically the prices are pretty high. Yeah. In our area, you can go in and I mean there are some things you're going to go, "Oh, that's a little expensive." And other things you're like, "What? They only want $4?" <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, there's so many other people there. I mean, the prices do vary. So yeah. that is definitely something that you should consider. Also, uh, if you have a locked case, we'll talk about security and locked cases or, you know, locked cabinets at another time. But that's something else, too, that if you have a cabinet, have the prices so people can see them. Yes. Because you're going to be wasting either other vendors' uh, time or employees or whoever to go and unlock that case just to see the price. So that's another inconvenient item, to have everything where people can see the prices so that it's easy to them to make that decision. So that's yep. that's definitely something too. Point picked. Point yeah. Picked. So I guess safety is definitely something that we really want to stress. Make sure that you have uh, everything secured. And it's not just going to be adult shopping. There are a lot of adults who don't pay attention to their children while they're shopping. No. Yes. <gasps> no. I was in the thrift store a week and a half ago. And there was a woman that was looking in the jewelry case and literally 10 feet away was a two and a half year old sitting in the seat, starting to get up to try and climb out of that, out of that uh. seat. And I said, you know, I'm like, you can be mad at me if you want. But I said, ma'am, he's going to climb out of there. He's trying to climb out. He could fall and hurt himself. And she's like, oh, OK, you know. But I mean, because then the lady behind the counter was like, oh, that makes me nervous when people do that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you want to make sure that whatever is in your power, in your space is going to be safe. Yep. And we also had, when we uh, were at the other place, it was a shelf that we ended up getting rid of because we didn't have room. It was a very wide shelf, very tall shelf. But it might have been even in an old video store or something because it was not that deep. And that thing, we had to attach it to the wall. Because if somebody, some little kid would have started climbing on that, oh, it would have fell that right thing would have fell over. Well, when you buy a bookshelf, they all come with a screw and a piece of something to tether it to the wall. Yeah. And that's why. Because they're top heavy. And they're, they don't have a big footprint on them to keep them from toppling over. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not even necessarily kids. I've stood there and watched and I've had to be careful even myself in booths I have a bad knee and I get bent down to look at something and if I don't carefully position myself when I bend down I sometimes have a hard time coming back up so you're I'll grabbing on the fixtures yes to stand up. so you know that or yeah. older people I uh, last week when we were in there a few minutes there was yep. an older gentleman remember that you walking pointed it out with to a me. cane and he had a cane in one hand and was holding on to everything else with the other hand. And he, uh, there was a glass shelf next to us that was full of glass stuff. And I was just kind of shuddering as he walked yeah. past. And I was like, oh my gosh, he, he's holding on to everything. But that's what you have to be aware of. Because then if someone leans on that shelf or pulls that shelf over or, 
you know, something is teetering and they get hurt, it's irresponsible. So, you know, you don't want you don't want to live with that. Yeah. And the booth uh, next to us is a double space. So it is 20 feet wide, whereas ours is 20 feet or 10 feet wide as you're standing in the aisle. And they have a huge wooden double ladder that you could adjust it. And they have it across the entire top of their booth. And they've been hanging stuff from it. Now, I've seen a lot of people do it. It's very pretty. It's interesting. But the center of this, it's, <laughs> it's starting to get a little closer to the ground. And even a customer pulled aside the owner while we were working in our booth and was saying, I come in here a lot and I noticed that that is that, you know, is sagging. So, I mean, if you're, you know, got that and you have, you're hanging up, you know, gas cans and and you know uh, yeah all kinds of stuff from that i mean yeah that's a great use of space but is that safe well like with all items you still need to when you're maintaining your booth that should be something that's on your mind um if you have glass items you got to check every now and then to make sure they're not chipped so someone can get cut or hurt on the edge of the shelf or if there's sharp edges i can't tell you how many stores i have been in in my lifetime And have scraped myself to the point of bleeding on the edges of things because it's sharp. So when you have stuff set up around that, you need to keep a check on it now and then to make sure it's safe and secure. That's true. So, you know, storage and display does include, you know, safety. I mean, could you imagine? Let's let's look at it this way. I mean, I'm, I'm sure all stores are insured for injury. But could you imagine, you know, another vendor putting up something that's not very safe at all and actually hurting or killing somebody. I mean, the whole business would go under. Yeah. I mean, so we all have to be very, you know, cognizant of that. And, you know, we want our customers to, to be safe and to have not only an enjoyable experience in our booth, but not be injured in our booth. And you want to make sure things look safe to others, no matter what you've done to make it safe. And the reason I say that is, um, We were talking before this in the old uh, place we were at a number of years ago now. There was someone had moved into this one space. And, you know, everybody you want to move in, you want to make it your own. You want to make it really cutesy and unique. And, well, they brought in, it was probably a display from a store or something at one point. But there was like two small columns wooden columns and then across the top it had a piece of wood across the top well I saw them putting this thing up and that and I was concerned about it and I would never walk in that booth because (laughs) it it was gonna fall on anybody's head it it would have been me yes (laughs) it's me um if it can go wrong it will that's my life but yeah it was like you when you walked up to it it was like is this thing just balancing on there or is it really secured on there and If people are afraid to walk in because they're afraid it looks like it's going to fall. Yeah. You're not going to make a lot of sales that way. Yeah. So that's that's really important. And you want, you know, we've talked about this before. Um, You know, if you walk around an antique booth and there are, you know, or antique malls and there's booths you just don't walk into, why? Stop and ask yourself, why, why don't I ever walk into this one? Or why... You know, and then question it because that's going to give you ideas for what not to do, you know, in your in your space. I mean, there's some that we, I don't know, they just kind of blend in. It's like you just, in our old mall, we were out there seven, like seven and a half years. And, and there were certain booths, I think we, you could count on one hand how many times we walked in. Yeah, and that's that's when you, we started, you know, honing our skills after a few years and that's what I started doing. We'd walk around and walk around. And then one day I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I've never looked in there. Why haven't I looked in there? Maybe they got something good. And then you're like, I don't know. Why didn't, well, let me think about this. I don't walk in there because it's, it looks too cramped. Um, it's dirty. It's too dark. There's stuff in the way. I Nothing have to step ever over moves. <laughs> yeah, it looks the <laughs> it looks same the every same. time I go by. And you, you become, when you take a moment and make yourself aware of those it's big red flags to know what not to do for your own stuff. And that's important to us as vendors because a customer's not going to stand there and say, hmm, why don't I want to walk into this booth? <laughs> no, they're just going to yep. keep on walking. Exactly. I remember there was one space, and I'm sure Kim will remember 
what this one was. They had the plain brown shelves. Three on one wall, two on the back wall, three on the side wall. It was like, it was like a library that they took all the books out and just threw stuff in there. And I mean, every shelf was brown. Every, there was barely any wall space to hang anything. It just looked, you know, just plain. Um, another thing that, that uh, you need to keep in mind is hanging stuff on the wall. You know, if this isn't like decorating your house. You don't hang a picture and go, that's beautiful. It's going to be there for 10 years until I'm titled, tired of looking at it. I mean, this is going to be stuff that is, you arrange it, everything fits, it's beautiful, and then somebody comes and buys something out of the middle of it. So yep. you're constantly going to be changing and moving, but you want to have stuff on the walls. There are some booths, and the best way I can describe it <laughs> is it looks like you went into a dollhouse and shook it. Everything just, settled yes. on the bottom. I was just going to say. <laughs> everything yeah. just settled at the bottom. There's nothing yeah. on the wall, but the floor is covered Yep, up to like down. yeah, up to like three <laughs> feet on the walls and is full. It. it just looks like you shook yeah. it and everything just fell. And they have pictures and and things that could be hung up all standing leaning, leaning against, against the yeah. wall. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. So think yeah. about it. I mean, you're you're not going to make everybody happy. Not everybody's going to love your booth. And I always laugh at this story because uh, Kim and I, whenever we're working, we're always there. You know, when customers are there. So if we have a customer come through, we usually just step out of the way and wait until they finish shopping. And uh, there was a, and sometimes when we do that, customers don't even know that we're restocking. They just think we're a customer that just kept on moving. So we kind of stepped out of the booth and we were standing in the aisle talking. And this older gentleman and his wife, the wife stepped in and was, ooh, look at this, look at this. And the husband stopped and kind of put his hand on his hip and kind of cocked his head back. And I thought, oh boy, here comes a bit of wisdom. And he said to his wife, look at all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of crap. And I said, that's spoken like a true husband. But me and Kim just started snickering because we're like, I get it. Not everybody, you know, and this is, you're not decorating like your house. You know, you put two pictures up and you're good. I mean, you're paying for the space. Well, you want everything to yeah. look, you know, full and, you know, fresh. And, it's, and it depends, too. Like, there are some vendors who have a genre for their whole booth. Yep. Everything is, you know, early American or everything is... Primitive. Yeah, primitive or, or whatever. Or they're all signage and... Got, and that makes it easy. If that's all you deal with and all you're bringing in is that, it's easy to make your booth look good because it all fits together. Yeah. But we don't do that. Yeah. We are so eclectic in our in our uh, purchases that it makes it really difficult sometimes to make it look cohesive and inviting because <laughs> nothing hardly ever, unless you... Like your frogs lately, we're overrun with frogs. Frogs, yes. It's like everything we're finding is frogs and more frogs. <laughs> Little frogs, big frogs. You brought in a Frat frog. frog, skitty frogs. Yes, a frog <laughs> teapot today. We have frogs that are, are sitting there like sunbathing with their hand on their chin. And I mean, <laughs> but I mean, normally you don't have a lot of, and it's it's really hard sometimes to keep the place looking cohesive because it's so diverse. And once you get it set up and it looks beautiful, yeah. it's going to look so beautiful that somebody's going to come and buy right it all. Up. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, we're constantly having to, you know, kind of refluff and rethink and reorganize and move things around. And mm -hmm. uh, something that we've done recently is I have some extra things to hang on the wall that I've brought in and I have them uh, underneath our white shelves uh, that are on the wall in the L brackets and I have them leaning up against there so you can still see them but when I have something sell if I didn't bring in something that's going to fit in that wall space I can reach down and pull something out and put it up on the wall so constantly having you know that stuff come in because you especially if stuff's odd sizes or whatever you're hanging it all up it all fits in and then somebody buys something so it's like arranging your house and you think, wow, this is perfect. And somebody comes in and takes your chair. Yes. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. great. Now I got to reorganize again. I mean, that's good. We want stuff to sell. We want stuff to move. But it does make it a bit of a challenge in displaying stuff. Well, I know you're saying that just brought up a red flag to one of the things of the do, do not do's. Yes. And that was bring in what you're going to display and put out for sale. Don't bring in a bunch of extra stuff in cardboard boxes and shove it 
into corners and under shelves and they're not priced, they're not clean, they're not nothing but just disturbing for me when I see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, literally, a not just a cardboard box, one that is closed and shoved yes, in a corner. Yes. And we know vendors who've done that. It's When you bring something in, it you have to have it clean, priced, displayed, ready to go, out the door. You yeah, know? Don't, don't just, you know, and if you don't have time to put it all out, that's one thing. Put it back in your car. Bring it with you next time. Don't leave a box of, you know, undone, folded up boxes of stuff in your booth. It just looks so tacky. Yeah. Something else that we've used occasionally, and I have one at home, but I haven't brought it out, is it's kind of like, almost like a file that you would set on top of your desk, but in a bigger form that you could stand up, you know, certain items. I don't know what... Like if you had it and you had it in a cabinet and people put their their baking sheets or lids for, you know, certain things. And to have something like that even would be nice if you have thinner signage or metal signs or a whole bunch of something yeah, that's very similar. we used to have similar. one of those at the other one that we'd put the metal yeah. signs in on the floor. Yeah, I still have one. So if that's it's something we want to use, that's, that's a good idea too. Uh, or even if you have you know, smaller items that are to be hung up, if they're in a, a bin or in a basket where you can just flip through them, you know, that's even fine if you have a lot of, you know, the smaller size well, that you don't have room for on the wall. Yeah, I was thinking, like, you always uh, have a variety of uh, pictures, vintage family photos or pictures, and those are all nice and neat in little uh, wicker-style baskets that aren't too deep. Mm -hmm. So they, the items stand up out of there, so when you look, you see what it is, but it's deep enough to keep them from falling out and, and getting... Yeah, and it's easy up. for people to flip through them, and it's not so stuffed. It's kind of like when you go to the store and they got too much on a rack of clothes, and you're, I mean, you're sweating practically, trying to wrench around and look at the shirts, and, and you just get to a point where you're like, <laughs> forget this, just forget it. Yeah. So you want to have things where you can flip and look through them and be able to look at them that way. But, you know, we don't want to aggravate our customers and make them just say, you know what, I'm done. <laughs> no. no. So, I don't know. Can we think of anything else or we did we pretty Ooh. much cover a lot of that I stuff? I think we covered a lot. And if we didn't cover it today, I'm sure we'll get it on another <sighs> another time. And I'm sure whatever we did say, we will repeat in the future. <laughs> 152 <laughs> times to be exact. Yeah, I got to make sure that you get it down into your brain there. <laughs> So, yeah, that is that is all we have for this podcast, um, talking about storage and display items. Uh, next week, we have another good topic, uh, coming up with a lot of ideas. If you have any ideas or something you would like us to talk about, or you have questions for us pertaining to an antique booth or an antique mall, please leave them in the comments below. If you don't want to leave them in the comments below with your name, you can email me at jen at pudgypicker.com. So, and if you don't want your name mentioned, you know, if you send it to me an email, I probably won't mention your name. But if you have a question and you'd rather not leave it below, that's the best way to do it. Uh, please also uh, give us a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, if you're interested in this podcast, I do other videos. I do haul videos. I did what sold on eBay videos. Um, have tons of other videos for you to see. So all aspects of reselling that we cover. So that's it for this podcast. Any Ooh. other sign off messages, Kimberly? Not that I can think of. You cover them so very well. Oh, I, I need to just have a recording at the end of each of my <laughs> videos and just because I go through the same spiel every time. Do it in your sleep. Just about. So that's it for Two Sisters, One Booth, episode four. And we will see you next week. And until then, we can't say happy picking. We still got to come up with a, a tagline to sign off with. Yeah, tagline. Oh. I'll work on that. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to episode 40. You'll have some worked out. <laughs> okay, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.